On today's episode, we give our takes on the NFL playoff weekend. That was, it was sensational. I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler, but you're all here for one reason, the footy awards. Don't miss a moment. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and leave us a comment if you think one of your votes got snubbed. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. And apologies. I was a little louder than I meant to be. That was I was going to say, I, I didn't know if you brought extra juice because it's the footy awards and you were just hyped, but I was... Um, Can I be sued if people careen off of the road? No. Or? no, 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 no. No? No. Podcasts cannot be held responsible for sharp turns Look, off the freeway? You need to, users, be responsible with your volume. I, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't quite sure where the voice was. And so I erred on the side of like, you know, I'm going to need the extra gusto. And it was fine. The thing is, we don't have five shows a week anymore. Oh, it's more rested. Yeah. So you store up. Wow. Yeah, so you're gonna At least to, for today. You're going to need to dial it back just a touch. <laughs> okay. Knowing these new powers. You are in mid-season form. We you're need right. you in off-season form. Okay. Thank you, Mike. We need you announcing... <laughs> Uh, like the, uh, what was that? The Chargers Jaguars announcers. Oh my God. Who, who can't give two farts about the, it, the, the greatest comeback. Listen, Al Michaels and Tony Dungy. <laughs> what was that? Were this single, that, that was the worst I have ever <laughs> experienced in my life. It was two men who were on the precipice of a recliner nap. They had <laughs> yeah. no, yeah, those dudes already had ice cream. They had no comprehension of what was taking place no volume was ever changed it was it's touchdown i mean it, it, you look i am the biggest al michaels fan in the oh, world because he's great but he's ha he was having a bad day and his pick me up on the other side was not chris collinsworth it was tony dungy who was reading a bedtime story <laughs> it was the bedtime story of the jaguars comeback they didn't know why the ball was closer to the goal line they when when Trevor Lawrence went in on the two point conversion that call if you can go back and look at it it was like and Lawrence uh, scores goes in <laughs> goes in for the two I mean it, it was one of the greatest comebacks yeah. in the history of the NFL and third, they were I asleep believe third biggest playoff comeback you wouldn't have if, known it nope they called it like it was the uh, thousandth biggest comeback in history. It was wild. But, no, what a weekend of football. Welcome back into the show. Footy Awards today. The official winners will be announced. Footies will be in the mail. I am very excited. This is the first time we've done this where I have I have absolutely no idea. I didn't look along the process Ooh, at all. and cheat and look. I have no idea who, who the winners are. I'm very excited. Um, it's going to be fun. I have, <laughs> I have no idea either. And we're just in a good mood. I have some ideas. Well, I mean, you cheated. I know what you. I know what you're saying. I'm look. I, someone's got to make sure that the that the votes are coming in and that they're voting for the correct things. Sometimes you have to sway votes. Uh, but those games, aside from the the commentating, that was not where it needed to be. Those games were exactly where they needed to be. They were football sensational. Is, Playoff football is it's so the unbeat freaking best. It's so unbeatable. Like I, all I thought this whole weekend was like how disadvantaged all the other sports are to football. Like yes. in some ways, the consequence of the weekend was like hitting me hard. Like you have this now 17 week season, tooth and nail, Minnesota. They fight, they battle, they get to whatever it was. Uh, oh, man. Not 12 and 4. What, 13 and thir 4. 13, 13 and 4. And they, oh, it's over. It's yep. just done. It's just done in two seconds. When, so, the, when the one score game bounces the wrong way at the wrong time, it's unbelievable. You leave the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. So lots to talk about today. Uh, we can get into it. Twitter at the FF Ballers. Join the foot.coms, our fantasy football community. As Mike said, two shows a week right now. You can get an extra show at jointhefoot.com. 
a lot of premium perks, access to the community. It's a lot of fun during the uh, off season, which is also dynasty season. I mean, we, we don't, you know, the NFL, they don't take a big break. We finished the Super Bowl. You blink and you're in the combine and free agency and uh, we'll be here for you. So the quick question is just what were your takeaways and reactions to wild card weekend before oh, we man. get into news, before we get into the footy award winners? Um, I'm going to go game by game. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, and just throw stuff out there if there was anything that, that stuck out to you that would tie into fantasy. You know, the 49ers – it was a close game with Seattle for the first half of the game, and it, it fell apart for Seattle over the back half. 41 points for San Francisco. Brock Purdy, to me, he is the kind of most interesting storyline in that game. What is his future now with this team? How far can they go with him? They're putting up 35, 40 points a game with Brock Purdy. Yeah, I mean, he threw three touchdown passes in his first playoff game, and he has not lost a game yet. As a starter, obviously surrounded by an extremely talented He's defense. surrounded by elite offensive weapons. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, but this looks like this looks like the best team. Legitimately, this might be the best team in the NFL right now, and they are being led by the last pick in this year's NFL draft. That's impossible is how it feels. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool to see, and I just love chaos. So the Trey Lance, Jimmy Garoppolo, Brock Purdy saga. I mean, awesome. I'm here for this. I'm, I got my popcorn out, and I can't wait to see. Like, what is Trey Lance's future? Dude, no idea. It's, like, we really have seen – you've seen no Trey Lance. You had. It's not like Kyler when he's hurt and he comes back, and you're like, oh, I've seen him for a while, yeah. so you know he's your starter. You have no idea. You had week one against the Chicago Bears where they played it a full-on monsoon, and then he broke his ankle. Like, you well, have not seen him play a real football game. So so here's an interesting take on that. Maybe what we've seen now with San Francisco is that you don't need to see Trey Lance to know that he'll be successful. Uh, that, that's been my entire argument I mean, for if, him if, if, for fantasy. If Jimmy Garoppolo and Nick Mullins and C.J. Beathard and Brock Purdy are all successful – then I bet Trey Lance will be successful plus running. <laughs> I mean, it's yes. just... There are a few plays that Brock Purdy makes, though, that I think, wow, that was that was pretty good. Uh, you know, very special. <laughs> uh, I thought you were giving me a bust no, up there. No, no. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, that's fine. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it, like, I don't know. I'm not saying well, oh, Tom be, Brady replacing accurate, Drew right? Bledsoe, but this is a situation where... If he goes and wins a Super Bowl, you oh he's the starter. Yeah, no question. But then you, like, how do you not trade? You would trade Lance. You would. You'd have. And to. you're gonna get a. You're not gonna. You're Actually, gonna no, lose you, a lot you, on he your would investment. Be the, he'd be the backup. Oh man, they've shown a willingness to do that with Jimmy G, and it paid off. They get hurt all the time. They need six, seven quarterbacks. Sure. Um, the other, the other storyline I would just mention is, I think throughout the season we saw the uh, kind of invincibility factor of DK Metcalf. It was San Francisco. He went 10 for 136 and two. He was great all season long. He's bigger, faster, stronger than everybody. Mm -hmm. um, Geno Smith says he wants to retire a Seahawk. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think Geno will get a deal. Uh, the Chargers game. Oh, I mean, man. it was 27 to nothing. <laughs> wow. And it was it was bad. I mean, there was uh, four interceptions in the first half by Trevor Lawrence. Uh, it made me in that moment extremely regret my comments about like. I think in the office or maybe on the show, I was like, ah, oh, Trevor Lawrence is probably it, like... It did play in my head. It was like, uh, I'm like, this is probably quarterback 5-6 in the league of who you would want on your team right now at this stage of their career. Yeah. And then he looked awful, and, and there was, you know, there was a couple bad... You know, one of them was a PI for sure, but eh, the other three were a problem. Huge comeback. In, impressive performance slash collapse. Yes, uh, like Lawrence in the second half was unstoppable. Justin Herbert in the second half was putrid. Like the fact that Keenan Allen, one of the best possession wide receivers in the NFL, one of the best route runners in the NFL, got 13 targets and he caught six of them is egregious. Like Mike that, Williams that is didn't so, catch any, right? Yeah, well, yeah there's Aww. the Mike Williams debacle of should they have played him. But I'm saying in this game, and we 
may have had a vested interest in Keenan Allen getting one more reception and the fact that he had 13 targets. And I'm messaging you guys because the whole second half of like, what are these targets to Keenan Allen? These are all garbage. It's, these were not Keenan Allen dropping passes. It was, it, it was an impossible catch. It was what is happening to Justin Herbert here? Well, they fired Joe Lombardi. Yes, yeah. that is <laughs> such great news for uh, Brandon Staley keeping his job, uh, which is great news for Sean Payton not going to the Chargers. Okay, uh, but this is also all <laughs> selfish. No, but no. Now to be uh, less selfish, Lombardi runs a terrible offense. I think Herbert is a great quarterback. I think the offensive system that they have run has been really, really bad. I Too am much. excited to see like a. a, a I mean. Any offensive coordinator would want this job. If if Herbert is your quarterback, you probably, if you're a good offensive coordinator, you're two years away from being a head coach. 31st in average depth of target this year with Joe Lombardi. But it doesn't help Keenan Allen if there's no Mike Williams. And you had, what, DeAndre Carter got hurt in the first half. You have Austin Eckler off the field too much, which is another product of offensive system issues. In my opinion, he was off the field too much. It's the playoffs. Like, now's the time to play your best player who makes a difference. You know, Jacksonville is a wild team. They remind me a little bit of um, the barely made the playoffs Cardinals when, obviously, he's not Kurt Warner. I'm not saying that. But the Cardinals were not, it wasn't a great record when they made their Super Bowl run. But they had this defense that had some athletes. It wasn't a great defense, but they made plays. Right. And Jacksonville has those players, Josh Allen and um, Walker. And then you have an offense that has these weapons that if they turn it on, they, they look unstoppable sometimes. Like the whole second half, they basically had to score every every drive, you know, and they pretty much did. And look, Evan Schmevin. Ingram oh. is, his, is his name. Oh, there it is. Best it's draft day value at the tight end position of all draft picks. At You know, sure, impressive. Uh, Evan Ingram has really been good. I mean, the the rookie year Evan Ingram, uh, if you don't remember, if you weren't playing fantasy at that point, he pretty much has the best rookie tight end season for fantasy football of all time. I think maybe Shockey was better. Um, Some, but, yeah, it's, but it's way up there. Yeah, it, it's absolutely fantastic. He was uh, drafted as an elite athletic prospect, and then he was disappointed for several years. And now that he's got a system that uses – the tight end, uh, a quarterback that is competent. All he needs now is just a contract since he was on a one-year deal, and he'll be an important fantasy asset next year. The Bills defeated the Dolphins 34-31. This game was... you. This game... <laughs> yeah. bra brackets almost annihilated. Uh, yeah, that was... That was wild. I mean, you could throw that one and the ravens Bengals into the, into the mix together where, you know... Defense made some plays for Miami. Obviously, Skylar Thompson. I think he completed about thirty something yeah, percent was, of his passes. He, he was not as good as Brock Purdy. Um, they had thirty-one points despite two hundred thirty-one total yards. So they made defensive plays. The Bills almost imploded. Uh, Josh Allen committed turnovers, which was something that was an issue all year long. I mean, he was near the top of the league in interceptions. But uh, yeah, the Bills and Bengals survive. Yeah, and it came down to if you happen to miss the game. Just absolute ineptitude of play calling there. Like we've we've praised the Dolphins coaching staff for when they've gotten it right. The end of the game, it was fourth and one. They're driving down, they're down three points, so they just all they need is a field goal to tie to send us overtime, or they can even score. It gets to fourth and one. Uh the clock is ticking down, the play clock. Something happens. I don't remember remember exactly what was in the play. They reset no, the I mean, game I clock. I saw it, yeah. They reset it. So he had 22 more seconds or whatever. And they point. still got a delay of game on a fourth and one. I'm, I'm it not was a, a Cliff Kingsbury type of thing. Very much. Like, I'm not – I have no you know, horse in the race, so to speak. Like, I'm not a Dolphins fan. I, the Bills are fun to watch. But it was like, okay, let's – the upset is really fun right now. I got so mad <laughs> on my couch – for Dolphins fans of it's fourth and one. Make your decision and go do it. What do you you don't need fifty seconds to get the play call in. Go do yep. it. Yep. Yep. Was that the drive where on third down they threw it instead of ran it as well? I can't recall. Yeah, it was it was a little bit of a mess. They they had lots of oh, it was 
near delay of games in that one. Um, the Bengals survive after stopping a goal <laughs> line. I mean, I've watched that play over and over again. If you haven't seen it, Tyler Huntley decides to try to go Trevor Lawrence, try to jump over the top of the pile. It doesn't really get that close. Does Trevor Lawrence have the longest arms in the entire world? <laughs> that was pretty cool. Like he that was that was Stretch Armstrong go go gadget. That thing was halfway into the end zone. Yeah, it was it was uh well, you wouldn't have known it was a good play if you asked Al Michaels, but it was pretty cool. And they score. And then uh what, Sam Hubbard ran it back ninety eight yeah. yards. Yeah, the the Slowly. play was the play was unbelievable. At that point, it was what seventeen to seventeen. Baltimore is on the goal line, about mm -hmm. to take the lead. The Bengals finished the game with twenty four points. They didn't score on offense again. So if that one yard play, just if they end in a field goal or well, punch they, in the, they the, did score after that because it was seventeen seventeen in the Bengals. Oh, you're right because that play scored. Right, Got, that, gotcha. Um, yeah. So I mean, it, it was one of those wow. like that game should have been the Ravens to have. And if you listen to J.K. Dobbins, oh man, dude is yeah. pissed. Yeah. He's so angry. He was so upset. He didn't mince his words or hide them. He's like, I'm sick of not being the guy. I want the ball. Why didn't you get me the ball? I would have scored another touchdown. Like you know, he. Scored the first one on an unbelievably incredible, just it was, athletic. It was a reception, though, right? Yes. Yeah. And it, it was, was a. What are they throwing near the goal line so much? You got the Gus Bus, and you got J.K. Dobbins, and this is your identity. It was so bizarre. That would have. I mean, Bengals lose there. That blows up. Yes. A yeah. bracket as well. So uh, they survived. The biggest, uh, I think, upset was the Giants over the Vikings, where you know they kind of controlled the game. They played Dude. well. Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones Saquon. played. So good. Saquon Barkley, uh, it was 24 for 35, 300 passing yards and two touchdowns. No interceptions. Daniel Jones was so good. <laughs> Brian Dayball, man. I mean, <laughs> seriously. It, it, I'm, I was, I've been as skeptical as I could be the whole year. Just like, how does this keep happening? And it just, I mean, they are so well prepared. And I, I'm, a, I'm a full believer because they have – so little talent. They shouldn't be in the second round of the playoffs. And they are. And they deserve to be. It's not lucky fluke plays. It's they're coming out and just playing as a team outrageously good and um for the talent. I mean, Hodges, Isaiah Hodges is like your Hodgins. main Hodgins. Hod See? <laughs> this is my point. Exactly. I Respect couldn't have said it better. No, I I apologize to the man, but my point is like Kenny Galladay and ever you know and Sterling Shepard and whatever weapons you thought you had, they're gone. And did start the year with Kadarius Tony as well. So you had to make the courageous decision to bench the money in mm -hmm. Galladay, to trade Tony the talent, the future. Yeah, and then just go at it with Richie James and company, and get it done. So you're right. I mean, the difference. Hope for all the teams that struggled this past year that are looking for a coach can be found in what Brian Dable was able to do in New York because they're house money at this point, right? His first year there, it's just gravy. Like, they got there, it's a successful season, and a lot of credit is due. The Vikings, they, you know, Kirk collapsed. Uh, they couldn't get it done. And their defense yeah, is their bad. De I, I mean, their defense say, is yeah. just awful. I don't think this is an offensive problem. I, um, You know, obviously there's a lot made of that last play where, you know, they throw it short of the sticks, whatever. They gave up 31 points to uh, Isaiah Hodgins and Darius Slay and, and or <laughs> Darius Slayton and um, You don't know <laughs> none of the Giants <laughs> names. The Vikings defense has been one that we've targeted for fantasy the last two months. They're putrid. They're just awful. And then the Monday night game, Cowboys 31, Buccaneers 14. It was a romp. Uh, Cowboys only only mistake was not being able to make an extra point. <laughs> that was awesome, dude. That was <laughs> it's impossible. I've <laughs> I've never seen a kicker meltdown when I uh, like that. Yeah, I was I was doing some stuff with the family. I didn't watch the first half of the game, but I was following it on my phone, and I see these scores pile up, and I'm like, okay, twelve twelve nothing. Well, that's they obviously missed one extra point, and then they missed a two point conversion. So I look and it's like missed extra point, missed extra point. All right. <laughs> yeah. Then I see eighteen nothing. I'm like, oh, they went for the two there. They would try to get two back. Well, they just got no, two, they, just, they just got two field goals. They just missed the extra point again. Uh but And then they, they did it one more time I mean, for fun. This game wasn't close. This was the culmination of a Buccaneers season that looked exactly like this game 
in every way, shape, and form. They kind of, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe their season, but asleep is a little bit a part of it. Just like not a lot of positive energy, uh, momentum. Couldn't put four quarters together over the course of the year. And, um, you know, you had the scary play with Russell Gage at the end of the yeah. end of the game. Cowboys dominated, what, five touchdowns for Dak? Between, four. Uh, uh, he had four passing. And one one rushing. Yep. So uh, I don't know if there were any big takeaways here other than, you know, what the future is for Tom Brady and then the byproduct of that is Godwin and Evans and what their passing game looks like if he were to depart. Yeah, that it, that's a big question. And the, the Tony Pollard question, I mean, that, that guy is – he is – outrageously good I mean there was a play where it one singular play where I believe he broke five tackles and it looked like he would there would be nothing there and it turned into a 10 plus yard play he is so much better than Ezekiel Elliott at this point Zeke can still play like he still has his his purpose in an offense but what do the what do the Cowboys do when you have all of that money in Zeke how do you possibly pay enough to Tony Pollard to retain him when he's going to be looking for the bag. If Zeke didn't have the contract he had, I would I would almost guarantee the Cowboys would be bringing Pollard back. Sure. Spare no expense, but it is complicated now with the Zeke situation, and you wonder what options they have. Which this is exactly why you don't give running backs that type of a contract because a it few, never works out. A few years into it, they start breaking down, and then the person, the, the player behind them, they look so much better. Uh, Kansas City will host Jacksonville. Philadelphia will host New York. That's a fun one. Buffalo will host Cincinnati. San Francisco will host Dallas. So uh, looking forward to it. Should be a lot of fun. Let's take a quick break and come back with some news. I failed to mention that the DFS pass is still free throughout the whole playoff. So if you want to play, I played some, uh, I played quite a bit of showdown this past weekend. How'd you do? Very well. Nice. Very well. I, I don't know what it is about that format, but. It's just the one you're good at. I know. It's just, that's the only one that I can play worth a darn. Which, Double digit losses on. I say, which is why the the committee has been so, uh, so stout in our uh, opposition of moving to that format yeah. I, w I was gonna say can we change friday oh, format? oh heavens no uh i vote nay <laughs> yeah nay. nay all right nay. <laughs> all right into the news news and notes from around the league all right Tua tonga vailoa expected to return as the dolphin starting quarterback for the 2023 season struggle with the concussions this year uh, the team was not the same without him. Yeah. Uh, you hope that he can stay healthy, but that's going to be a back of your mind situation moving forward. And the team will have to, you know, Teddy Bridgewater, I believe is a free agent. Skylar Thompson's probably not the answer at the backup. So I would consider them like contenders for a Dalton level yeah. backup. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, a, a Bridgewater level backup. Yeah. If, if yeah. he leaves, um, they'll, they'll need someone else. I wouldn't be surprised if they re-sign Bridgewater, but with a, an entire off season, uh, for Tua, he should be good to go. Yeah. I mean, if you're Teddy Bridgewater, that's a pretty good place to be like a really strong team and a quarterback whose future is very uncertain. It's just crazy. Cause I think every time Bridgewater had the opportunity this year, he also got hurt. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Matthew Stafford expected to have his 2023 option and 2024 salary picked okay. up. Okay, Sean McVay is coming back. So McVeigh and Stafford reunited for another year. I don't know if you saw the uh, Aaron Donald. Yes, I did. He I briefly did had his uh, Twitter profile changed to former defensive lineman. Oh, my. But then he changed it real quick. Well, he changed it once the Sean McVeigh news came out <laughs> that he's coming back. He's like, oh, okay, all right, I'm still around. Chargers fired Joe Lombardi. Like I said, they'll have a new offensive coordinator. Brandon Cooks. Does not want to be part of the rebuilding process in Houston. He is a uh, candidate to be moved and then would be an interesting player to look at in the uh, – he just always produces. And even after he came back from you know, his absence at the end of the year, he kind of produced. Uh, and then Cliff Kingsbury took a one-way <laughs> trip to Thailand. 
And that's not a joke. That sounds like a joke, but it's so true. I, uh... Cardinal season comes to an end. If I told you their GM would step down and their head coach would take a one-way trip to Thailand. I would say sounds about Cardinals. So Man. they uh, they're moving on. I think Cliff's having the last laugh here. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I mean, like just loaded, and you're like, eh, I'm I'm done. I'm gonna go I'm going to Thailand. I'm gonna be on the beach. You guys want to buy his house out here? The one that became famous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, NFL head coaching contracts usually have offset language to where when they are fired, even though their contract is fully guaranteed. The ownership group is recouped from whatever their new job is. So they go and they go to college and they get a big contract. They don't get both of those contracts usually. Uh, the the new contract overtakes the old one. Uh, you know, and they pay or there's the, offsets of some. Yes, amount. they pay yeah. the the difference um, over the top. This is like Cliff going. You're paying. Hey Bidwell, <laughs> I ain't, I'm not. Ta- he's apparently not taking any calls for uh, coaching opportunities. He Only wants all that all that money coming from uh, the Cardinals. Say calls for my ties. Yeah, one way. That's it. One way trip uh, where all the coaches go to <laughs> take a break. Uh, any other news, Brooksy? How's Deucer's Alley? Keep on deucing. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we're going to move on and get into these very illustrious, incredible, respected awards. Ooh, we got lights this year. Oh, Whoa. welcome into the <laughs> footies. We do have lights. My goodness, it's a festive atmosphere. Well, it's the most uh, sought-after award in the universe. It's been quite the year, Mike. It's we have to dole out the hardware. The worst part of the footies is we're ineligible. We would win them. Yeah. Well, we would definitely would. Performance and, of the year, that has us written all over it. And it would be the honor of all honors. But it's our award, so we yeah. can't. It's... Yeah, that's the trouble with making awards. <laughs> uh, all right, the performance of the year. And everybody, you, thank you for voting over the last week. Uh, the performance of the year was uh, won by Jamar Chase last season with his 50-point playoff performance. Which was fair. <laughs> yeah, championship week, fifty points. You get the you get the footy. This week's uh, or this year's candidates: Tua from week two, Justin Fields, forty two fantasy points in week nine. Joe Mixon had fifty three in week nine. Josh Jacobs forty five in week twelve. Mike Evans forty three in week seventeen. Stephon Diggs thirty eight points in week two, and Hawkinson with almost thirty six points in week four. Who also. I mean, that, that just, oh, he's really good. Just a, just a quick side note of uh, from back from the game. I mean, we've kind of been talking about T.J. Hawkinson next year on and off of where where do you go with him in the draft? And I, dude, like, there's a chance that T.J. Hawkinson is the tight end too. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. All right, the winner of the performance of the year goes to. No. Joe Mixon. Oh, baby. No. Winner. <laughs> week not 41% of the vote. The uh, wow. five Jeez. touchdown performance. Your favorite player got snubbed, Jay. I know. My my <laughs> Mike. And this was not very close. The runner-up was Mike Evans with 26%. So wow. 41% to Joe Mixon. Mike Evans, 26%. Be- people, people big mad at Mike Evans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Joe. Your footy is in the mail. Oh, like, my goodness. Mike Evans, championship winner, single-handedly. Like, no. no, Not for a lot no. of people, I know man. <laughs> Not enough people played him. All right, Jason, you got the neck. No, oh, uh, Mike has it the next It is me. One. It is the Fantasy Reapers Man of the Year, which player's painful injury hurt fantasy managers the most, which last year, of course, unfortunately. Yeah, like, I mean, this is – you don't really want to win this one. Let's let's be fair about it. But no, Chris, you don't want to be the fantasy Reapers man of the year. But Christian McCaffrey got it last year, but had the big bounce back. So, not saying, just saying. These year's nominees, Javante Williams, Keenan Allen, Darren Waller, Brees Hall, mm-hmm. Cooper Cup, and Jonathan Taylor. Hit the drums. <laughs> of course. Cooper Cup yeah. at 33%. Yeah. 
Johnny Taylor at 29%, the overall number one pick, still was not as painful as what Cooper Cup's injury brought. Well, yeah, I mean, he was just – he was on another level still. Yeah, he was the wide receiver one uh, going away, and then you lost that. Whenever you, you would have wondered what would happen if he was healthy and you still lost Stafford towards the end of the year for fantasy championships. That would have been interesting. That would have been interesting. Um, all right, next up, let's talk some poop. <laughs> the Poopiest Pants Award – Last Which, year, to be fair, you probably don't want to win this award either. No, these you should are always be in charge of this one. These are, yeah, this is it's kind of my deal. Um, last year, pants. yeah, so it's just <laughs> it's so much fun. You got to try it, Mike. Um, Alan Robinson won it last year. He is up again this year. But here are the contestants. <laughs> you have Justin Herbert with his third round ADP. Yep. Russell Wilson, complete collapse, seventh round pick. Jonathan Taylor, the one oh one, who stunk it up. Uh, and got injured. Alvin Kamara, a first-round bust. Debo Samuel, a second-round bust. Just, just a weird year for Debo. DJ Moore, yeah. who won a lot of people championships but <laughs> was bad throughout the season. <laughs> Allen Robinson, a fifth-round bust. And, of course, Kyle Pitts. Come on, back was to the back. Pitts no. to draft. <laughs> Let's have them drums. Come on, back to back. They can't be, please. <laughs> we have a new... Poopiest oh. Pants Award, and it goes to, and I think correctly so, Kyle Pitts yeah. with 33% of the vote. The runner-up was Russell Wilson. Oh, oh man. yeah. So he so went some close. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Thank, but I, I thank get goodness it. for that. The, the truth <laughs> is, in, uh, in the third round, Kyle Pitts at a onesie position. Yeah. Way more valuable. Just, he roasted people. If you drafted Kyle Pitts, it was... You're, you just had a bad season because you couldn't get out of them. <laughs> yes. You don't want to wear the pants when they're pooping it. No, but sometimes... You want to get out of them. Yeah, if you if you draft those pants those things are high tight. enough, you just end up wearing them. Those were like skin-tight pleather. But also, so just, you can't get out. Kyle, good news. Your footy <laughs> is in the mail. All right, the waiver wire wonder, which undrafted waiver wire stud was the best signing of the 2022 season... Last year it was Cordero Patterson. This year's nominees, Jarek McKinnon, Zay Jones, Christian Watson, Justin Fields, and Geno Smith. The footy goes to Justin yep. Fields, 44%. The runner-up was Jarek McKinnon at 23%, who credit to Jarek McKinnon for emerging as a nominee in this category. But, Certainly. but Justin Fields, I mean – your Trey Lance stuff didn't go well this year, Mike. And, no, it did not. And um, it broke. Bump, bumpier road, not not like off a cliff, but bumpy road for you know like Sutton and Pittman. Mm -hmm. But the Ingram and Fields reemergence, <laughs> redemption, baby, does it has to feel good? <laughs> it feels very good because the because you were going to stand them for life regardless oh. of what they did. So this is very <laughs> yeah, very important. Helpful. Uh, myself and the Borgogan. I mean. We were on Fields Island, and we're just there was there was no one there. You know, when it's, when it's like the comic book island, oh, I, was, I was there during the draft, but then I got on the boat quick. <laughs> like it, it felt really, really, really bad. But then he bounced back. He was certainly the sexiest pick for I mean, because he came in and was a weak winner. But I want to shout out Geno Smith, the QB five, Geno Smith from undrafted of. We all guilty as charged, and I think the the public. I was gonna say everybody on earth. I say but the Gino? public. The, the public said there's no way that this could possibly happen, and Geno Smith was fantastic. He didn't write back, Mike. He didn't write back. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah. All right, moving on. All right, we got the fantasy quarterback what? of the Thanks year. Thanks for introducing that. Yeah, You're welcome. thank you. You want to read the nominees for me? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> So factoring draft position, big game performances, <laughs> and impacts to fantasy teams everywhere. Who gets the footy this year's nominees? Patrick Mahomes, Josh Stallion, Joseph Burrow, Jalen Hurts, and Justin Fields snuck into the quarterback of the year conversations. My man Geno Smith, he couldn't get there despite being the quarterback five. What's that all about? Who knows? Who's picking these nominees? But the winner is hit the drums. <laughs> Of course, Jalen Hurts with 59% of the vote. The runner-up, Patrick Mahomes, at 16%. I mean, 
Mahomes was fantastic, but for where you drafted Jalen Hurts and what you got. Delightful. It hurts so great. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and as someone who had a lot of Jalen Hurts, it was a great experience. Obviously, the last two weeks were, were bad, but you know, this is one of those things where we saw this last year. Derrick Henry goes down to injury, but he was so good that he got you into the playoffs and you could win titles. And Jalen Hurts did the same thing for a lot of people. A lot of people won championships even without Jalen Hurts because they got there. Um, the fantasy running back of the year. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Uh, last year's winner was Jonathan Taylor. This year, we have Austin Eckler, mm. Christian McCaffrey. He's back. Josh Jacobs, Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, and Tony Pollard. The winner. Before you say it. If it's not Josh Jacobs, say I'm, I'm going to be very upset. Austin Eckler is the runner-up for back-to-back -back seasons. The winner is Josh Jacobs with 43% okay. of the vote. Okay, all right. Austin Eckler always hanging out. Runner-up two years in a row. I had a dream last night that Mike and I were co-drafting a team, and we're in the sixth round. And there's Austin Eckler on the board. I'm like, oh my gosh, we got to take the him. Pick? He was the pick. Yeah, we, I, I convinced Man. Mike uh, <laughs> to talk to me. And yeah, had to get me on board. Yeah, <laughs> Jamal Williams was not a nominee, but could have been. Yeah. When you look at the uh, best value compared to draft position at running back, Jamal Williams was right at the tippy top. Jalen Hurts was number one in the quarterback position. Jamal Williams, Detroit RB one. Indeed. Is it my turn? Am I yes. allowed to? Okay. The fantasy wide receiver of the year. And again, we factor in draft position, big game performances, uh, all of those factors for the footy. And of course, you are very studious in your voting. Last year, Cooper Cup took it home. This year, the nominees, Justin Jefferson, Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell, Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, Stephon Diggs. This is it. This is really, I barely need the drum roll here. Justin Jefferson okay. by a billion. All right. By a billion. That, that was <laughs> a billion one of the, percent. A billion percent. Uh, no, 51%. Tyreek Hill was 16%. So that shows you the gap because everybody voted for, um, you know, it was a mix of, of Hill and, and probably some Stephon Diggs in there. But Justin Jefferson was the clear wide receiver of the year. Stephon Diggs at the end there. Kind of let people down. Yeah, I, you know, that's true. It, it is funny to think that the quarterback of the year, the running back of the year, and the wide receiver of the year, clearly awesome picks. The, the championship week wasn't uh, right. wasn't their favorite week. Yeah, yeah. I, I just realized that, like, I traded Diggs to Mike and I traded mm -hmm. Jefferson to Jason. Nice. So, like, I supplied you both with wide receivers of the year. Thank you. You did. So, I'm heading out. <laughs> This one is the fantasy tight end of the year. Hopefully, Foot Clan, you did the right thing. Last year's winner was Mark Andrews. This year's nominees, we have Travis Kelsey, TJ Hawkinson, Hockules coming through, George Kittle, my dude, Evan Ingram, and then not my dude, Taysom Hill. How does Taysom Hill in this category? Get out of here. The tight end of the year goes to... Travis Kelsey, that's fine. What is the percent of 68? Both? Okay, that's, yeah, that's the highest of anybody that's so far. That's fine. Evan Ingram at least was a runner up. Okay. So, we'll we'll take solace in that. I'm not even sure he deserves that. How dare you? <laughs> I think I would have given runner up to Hawkinson. The, the only who problem would have thought that the path for Hawkinson would have been a trade. That's the that's the issue with Hawkinson. Like I I had Hawkinson in our league of record. I traded him away cuz you were like I'm out. He was terrible. So if you drafted him, you might not have hung on to him cuz he was so bad uh, other than like one big week he you know and then he gets traded and becomes awesome. Uh becomes he, everything that we hoped Irv Smith would be. That is true. Yes, exactly. The process was correct. <laughs> All right. The breakout player of the year. Who was fantasy football's biggest breakout? The options. Justin Fields. Okay. Trevor Lawrence. Tony Pollard. Ramondre Stevenson. Devonta Smith. And Kenneth Walker. Who did you guys vote for? I voted for Pollard. I, I voted for Fields, I believe. but I, I voted for Smith. Yeah, I think Devonta Smith does not get enough credit for what a great season he had. Let's find out. <laughs> the winner is Justin Fields with 36%. Right. Runner-up, 
Kenneth Walker, and in third place, Tony Pollard, right next to That was to a really, Walker. really close one in yes. terms of, like, we all voted for different players, mm -hmm. and they also weren't the pick. So, Oh, you voted for Fields, you said. But. Yes, but, uh, I mean, Justin Fields, you're going to need to clear some mantle space yes. because your footies are in the mail. Yeah. Well, I wonder how he'll perform on his new team. <laughs> oh, man. Could be. All right, the rookie of the year. Last year, Jamar Chase took it home. This year's nominees, Brees Hall. That's da my vote. Damian Pierce, <laughs> Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Kenneth Walker. The winner goes – the winner is – it's Kenneth Walker at 48%. Garrett Wilson, the runner-up. What was his percentage? I'm curious. 23. Wow. Yeah, Garrett Wilson's ride was uh, – it was a tough one to predict at times. Yeah. Quarterbacks all over the place. Um, it was fun when he – did start and have a good game, but it wasn't as consistent as Kenneth Walker. Yeah, he just had, like, from weeks three through seven, it was purely unusable. Oof. All right, Mike. All right, where? Oh, comeback player of the year. Oh, my guy's got a chance. Comeback player of the year, which fantasy player amazed you the most in their return to relevance? James Conner took it home last year, of course. This year's nominees are Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, Jared Goff, and my dude, Evan Engram. Apparently, the snub alert is Geno Smith. Can you be a comeback player if you were never there? No. You got to yeah. come back to something that you once had. So why is Evan Engram here? Oh. Hey, it's rookie year. We, you just talked about it. It but was good for That was rookie. 70 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Another was, generation. But he was there. He, was, he took a vacation, and he's back now. All right. Hit the drums. Comeback player of the year goes to... Saquon Barkley. That makes sense. What, what's the, the percentage? Mail? 41. Christian McCaffrey, the runner-up at 28%. Okay. Oh, All man. Right. Evan Ingram getting getting no votes. Mike, I'm so sorry uh, for he, your feelings. He got one from <laughs> me. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, after the comeback player of the year, we're going with the steal of the draft. These are guys who brought you to glory from an unexpected draft position. You have Jalen Hurts in the sixth round, and Joe Burrow also in the sixth round. Josh Jacobs, a fourth-round pick, but the running back, 21. Amari Cooper, sixth-round pick. Tyler Lockett, ninth-round pick. Devonta Smith in the eighth round. And Travis Kelsey at the top of the second, but was the tight end one overall. Who was the steal of the draft? Josh Jacobs with okay. his second win tonight. The runner-up was Jalen Hurts, uh, but it was not a very close uh, – it was not a very close – Vote? Vote. 48% to 26%. <laughs> I wanted to see how many times you'd repeat it. My bad, it, my bad. Searching for the word. Thank you, Andy. Uh, very so, close. So, to be – Justin Fields has three awards, is that right? Or two? I believe two. two and right? then Josh Jacobs has two? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it on to me? This it is. This is the me. last one I have to give away. The playoff king, which player drove fantasy managers to a championship during the playoff weeks 15 through 17? Last year, Amon Ross St. Brown took it home. This year, we had a ton of nominees. Eckler, Algier, Akers, Lamb, Devontae Smith, DJ Moore, McKinnon, and Kittle. The playoff DJ Moore. king. Play playoff king slash poopy his pants. Yeah, goes to. <laughs> yeah, it's his whole career. <laughs> Jarek McKinnon oh. Oh. In, a, a, in an extremely tight race. He had 33% of the vote. The second place was R Austin Eckler with 31% oh. of the vote. Always the bridesmaid. Austin, your, your runner-up trophy yeah. <laughs> is not in the mail. Where's, we don't make those. Where's the drop? Where's, I, where's I, the king? Producer team. Man. That's Amon Ra. <laughs> <laughs> they can't win them all. All right, the all big ones. Right. Here we time here for the big we ones. go. It's time for the real magic with the nickname of the year. This is one of our better awards. Yeah, oh, for sure. Last year, the Muth is Luth. He got so Luth, Pat Fryer Muth, and the nominees this year: the Dump Truck, aka Leonard Fournette. Hit it. Dumps like a truck, truck, truck. Like, what, what, what. A little bit of cheating there. 
Brees Lightning, which is a Brees Hall. Uh, Colcomo is on this list. Colcomo <laughs> got there fast and took it slow. Voldemort, he shall not be named slash played, a.k.a. Deshaun Watson. The spot start, Zay Jones. Schmevin Schmangrum, who may have mm. ditched his uh, nose and glasses and become Evan Ingram. We'll see. The 12th man, <laughs> Russell Wilson, still getting it done for his precious Seattle Seahawks. And then the awful tower doing my man Paris Campbell a little bit dirty. The winner is. Do we, do we own oh, a drum? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not even close. Yeah. It is the dump truck, Leonard Fournette, at 61%. You knew that was going to win, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, I thought Mike might have brought some Schmevins oh, along with no, him. Yeah. What was the percent? 61%. Voldemort at 49 Schmevin down in third at 35%. Yeah, the, the dump truck clearly uh, was the best nickname this year. As Didn't voted. do much last night. Mm, oh, nickname, man. not player. <laughs> they went into the playoff, Lenny. He had a. Did you see his? He had a playoff, Lenny jersey. And did you see them? They they reported there was a broadcast report that the Bucks intentionally were resting Leonard Fournette over the second half of saying like that's why White for was playoff Lenny so that they could get playoff Lenny. <laughs> Oh, man. Whoops. Yeah, he was a different kind of dump last <laughs> night. All right. And the illustrious, the special, the unique, the amazing. Can only get it here. The Fantasy Footballers Moment of the Year. Which moment was your favorite? Was it? And the nominees are Andy's voice crack. Oh, boy. I liked it. Mike calling Al, you fat, on the mailbag drop. I was repeating Andy's sentiments. The catch child. It's, it's a, a catch. It's a catch. Zay Jones weather report. <laughs> P P R. Bijan Robinson fake out. Manly Mac Jones reporting. The Kyle Pitts mental breakdown of Andy Holloway. My wrong player analysis talking Gibson versus McLaurin. Or sailing out to sea on a boat on fire. Tremendous timing. Well done. Again, and, he seems to hit that every year. And the winner goes to Andy's voice yeah, crack yeah, yes. at 18%. Oh, that was a tight vote. Very, very close. The top three, Andy's voice crack at 18%. Kyle Pitt's mental breakdown at 17%. Andy, you're, you're, you're killing those are it, both Andy. And the Bijan Robinson fake out at 14%. Three for three? Came in third. All the moments happening over here, boys. <laughs> and just so people can remember. How great Andy's voice crack oh, was. On. Here it is. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh yes. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the podcast. <laughs> Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Yes. <laughs> All my worst nightmares came yep. true immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Mm. Oh well, I'm glad we could remember that. <laughs> I'm thrilled. Yeah, that was a that was a special time. Here's what's cool. What great effort I made. This. Here's what's cool about this episode. Well, I I didn't know what was going to win show of the year, but you came into this episode where you won the footy. By the way, it's in the mail. Oh, thank you. Um, we're going to mail it from here yes. to, to here, but it yeah. needs... we're going to send it around the world. <laughs> yes. Um, you came out strong with your intro for today. Oh, and then you win for having the worst performance of the year. Yeah, that was, that was special. That was really special. That took a while to, uh, to have the courage to try, <laughs> but I uh, hope you enjoyed Should it. Thank have you. Taken longer. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I appreciate all of. The Foot Clan participating in the Footy Awards for yet another season. Um, I am curious. Let's let's poll everybody real quick before we close it down. Let's poll Deucer's Alley. What was your vote for the moment of the year? I'm sure each of you voted. Uh, it's Catch Child for me. I Catch love that. Child yep. for the Borgogan. 
I thought Catch Todd would win, but I actually voted for the you fat mailbag drop. <laughs> that one just How's that feel, yeah, Al? It was so funny. Accurate. Uh, I voted for uh, the Gibson McLaurin wrong player analysis. Okay, Mike, do you, do you remember I who you voted for? I don't even remember. I voted for the Bijan Robinson. I think that's guy. what I voted yeah. for, too. So, All right, the truth episodes of the podcast, they start on Thursday this week. Looking forward to those. If you've not been a part before, uh, we just take a deep dive into each position group and tell you the truth about these players. It's not all about their fantasy finish at the end of the year. It's about their consistency. How much did you receive from each guy? You know, when did they let you down? How often did they cross thresholds that actually matter for you? Um, you know, we we talk about Geno Smith getting snubbed a lot on some of these awards. We'll see if that's warranted or right. not I mean, on the you, next episode. Because you can – the stats can be spun. Like, I can tell you – Mike Evans was the number two overall wide receiver through the fantasy playoffs, <laughs> and that is factually accurate. Yeah, I'll be curious what the truth about Schmevin Schmingrom <laughs> is, because that may define what I call him into the future. The quarterbacks will start with them on Thursday. Chat with you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.